Okay, I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while now, and I've finally got round to it. So, here it is. This is my Fort Park review. Right then, in October 2019, I visited Fort Park for the very first time and not going to lie, this place blew me away. From growing up with Alton Towers, which had been compared countless times to Fort Park, I was very pleasantly surprised. I really don't know why this place gets so much hate. The first aspect I want to talk about is their coaster lineup. If you're familiar, Fort Park has some great coasters including the Swarm, my first B&M wing coaster, Stealth, an insane Intamin Accelerator, Nemesis Inferno, a B&M Invert, Colossus, and Saw the Ride being the most noticeable. They do have a family coaster, Flying Fish, but it's nothing special. However, for me, the most surprising thing about Fort Park in terms of coasters was The Walking Dead The Ride. Now, I had no expectations before going into this thing, and the theming inside the ride as well as the queue line was fantastic, which really surprised me to be honest. Yeah, the actual coaster was kind of meh, but the overall experience was fantastic. I'll talk more about the coasters in some reviews that I've got coming up on the channel, but overall the coaster lineup is solid. Yes, it would be nice for them to get a new coaster, but that's a topic for another day. The next thing I really want to talk about is the general atmosphere built up in the park. Now, because I did go at Fright Nights, all the scare attractions were up and running as they normally are at this time, and I didn't go to any of them because I was just low on time. But I must say that it's good to see that Fort Park are making the mazes free, unlike Alton Towers, which I personally find a bit too expensive for what you're actually getting. Around said mazes, there was kind of this spooky, sinister vibe. However, in other areas of the park, there was this contrasting chill-like atmosphere. This is what I can presume Fort Park is like normally without Fright Nights, but honestly, I really like the overall feel of the park. It was very relaxed and really enjoyable. Yes, it may not be as good an atmosphere as other parks, but I personally really like it. It's simple, but great. Operations, however, yeah, they did vary. On rides like Stealth and Saw, they were pushing through trains very, very quickly, but on Nemesis Inferno and Colossus, the operations were really slow. I don't know why this was. It may have just been the day that I visited, but operations overall weren't too bad, but they weren't fantastic. The longest I waited throughout the entire day was for Nemesis Inferno at around 50 minutes, but I did see that ride go above 100 minutes later on in the day. That's probably because it was on one train, which isn't great, however, if it's for maintenance and mechanical issues, then that's fine, it just has to be done. Now, due to time constraints and the park being absolutely packed, I didn't manage to get on any flat rides except for Detonator, and I sadly also didn't get on Darren Brown's Ghost Train, a controversial dark ride, which was annoying, but at the same time, it makes me more excited to come back. Detonator, I found it to be a good drop tower, the second best I've ridden, with the first being Apocalypse at Drayton Manor. You get some really good airtime on the ride, and it's kind of underestimated in my opinion. Fun story, my cousin and I wanted to experience the 4D cinema in Angry Birds land, because why not, and we expected Angry Birds, right? But nah, we got two short, kind of goofy horror films. It was quite funny because we didn't know what we were going into. Talking of Angry Birds Land, I really don't like the area as a whole. It seems so out of place at Fort Park, and there's not really any boundaries to it. And um, plus, Angry Birds just isn't a thing anymore. Give it a chill vibe like the rest of Amity seems to hold. I think the area does have a lot of potential in the coming years. Another thing I really want to talk about is Fort Park's location because it's actually located on an island so you're surrounded by water and I love it. Honestly it is an island like no other. When you've got your tickets and you go through the turnstiles and you walk on this bridge and you see all these rides in front of you and of course the dome straight ahead, it's quite impressive 
and it makes you wonder, wow, this is cool. When I went to Fort Park, I didn't buy any food there, no, I brought a packed lunch, but what I did buy was some merchandise. And there was two main points where you could get some really good merchandise. They have like a mega store, and then they have a shop in the dome. I found they had a large collection of stuff, um, lots to choose from, all types. I mean, it is Merlin, and they are very similar to Walton Towers in the type of products that they do, such as hoodies, resins, mugs, you name it. There's quite a lot to choose from in there. And more on the dome, the dome is actually pretty cool. It's air conditioned, so if you're on a hot day, it's very relaxing to stay in there. They have their themed audio playing in there, and there's also a place to sit down. If I were to sum up Fort Park in one word, it would be fun. The place is seriously fun. The coasters are good, the atmosphere is relaxing, and for me, there's a lot of things I really like about the place. Do remember, I am gauging the review after only one visit, but I'm pretty sure my opinions on the place won't change anytime soon. And that's about it with my Fort Park review. You've been watching Stubwood, and hey, if you want to see where I place some of the coasters at Fort Park in my top 10, then go check out this video on your right. On that note, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a fantastic day.